Good morning and happy Wednesday, everyone. Today might be a shorter video just because what we're going to be doing is tracing over the lettering that we made yesterday. Um, what I'm using right now is just a white uh, gel pen and we'll be tracing over the letters that we made in pencil and coloring in the down strokes. So all of the thicker lines that we made, we'll just be coloring them in so it will look a little bit cleaner. So the beauty of outlining in pencil that everything's perfect by the time you go to letter. This is a little bit less stressful. If there are any imperfections you made with your pencil, such as making a downstroke too thin or too thick, this is your opportunity to sort of correct it and whatever shows outside of those lines in pencil can be erased once the ink is dry. And also if there were missed opportunities for flourishes which might not stand out as much when you're writing lightly in pencil but stands out more when you um, have a contrasting color. You can also sort of improvise those as you go. So I'm making that little swoosh a little bit longer there. Like I said, you don't have to have the best natural handwriting in order to letter an envelope beautifully. Um, if you don't even you don't even have to have the steadiest hand, um, it helps. But if you have patience and you know don't mind going a little slower. able to achieve a really nice end result. So there's some little parts that I'm correcting with my pen here. And as you can see, I made my E pretty short. And I don't like the way that's looking as I'm outlining it here in pen. So I'm gonna bring that line up a little bit and I'm gonna correct this letter. In the workshop, we'll be working with um, serif, sans serif, and scripts, and <clears throat> I'll be showing you sort of the best way to pair them for um, a really visually appealing layout. And we'll do some a little more in-depth illustration, little doodles for your envelope as well. But I'm just really I'm excited to teach a new class. Um, it's taken a little time to put together, but 
that just means that it's going to be chock full of a lot of really good information. So the class is fun, but it's also um, in the vein of what I love myself, which is just being a perpetual student. So we've got that first one letter, and so I've corrected this E, so it kind of, it's a little bit bouncy, I like it. And then we'll go down to the next line here. And I feel like I've put this little swash a bit too close. So I'm just gonna correct that with my pen and then I'll erase all the strays after, after the ink is dry. There we go, and I'll curl that up into near the two. That way it looks like it sort of fits together in a puzzle piece. And that's another great thing about lettering is that you can sort of make it feel like an art piece more so than if you do if you just use fonts from a computer, you've got just a, a straight line of things unless you have the programs to individually manipulate the letters, which takes a long time to do and isn't super practical for mailing envelopes. It would be if you're, you know, making something for your home, just like a little quote piece, you know, it could work. But this gives you the opportunity to... Um, style it how you want um, in a pretty fast method. Now calligraphy with a calligraphy pen takes a bit less time just because you're not going back and making these thick and thin lines. But if that's really, really daunting, that's the great part about lettering. Um, it's a, a good place to start. Um, that's how I actually got into calligraphy is I was lettering first. Um, I would write my script out and then I would thicken the lines up. But it taught me sort of how to create the shapes. And that's why I say it's not really like writing. So it's not, it's not like cursive in that you're continually connecting the letters. It's not like writing in that everything has to be straight. You're creating a shape. And if you go on these little font sites, you can, you can look at fonts that are similar to each other. That, um, and you can see the variations. You can see, you know, how a B is formed, how... How they write their A's and you know if there are alternates like what they if there are alternate letters that are um, provided what those look like and you can see how they look combined with other letters which is really neat and that's that's sort of how I learned is I would look at these fonts and how they were styled and I would sort of mimic them. I would write them down and put my own spin on them. But when it came to writing a lot, I taught myself the point pen. Um, and I'll be offering more calligraphy classes in 2018 but I really wanted to mix it up and create something new for the holidays that would be extremely um, forgiving so that it wasn't stressful. Um, 
it's a stressful time of the year. So just something that, that can be really relaxing and really, really rewarding just to, to learn and to share. I think everybody um, appreciates something that's not on a screen. So there's just something nostalgic and uh, tactile and really warm about hand lettering. So what I've actually accidentally done, but it's a, it's a good way to show you, is I've made my L, I've overcorrected it too wide, so it's come into this A. So what I'm gonna do with the A is I'm just gonna style it a little bit differently. Sort of gonna cut the one leg off of it. You'll still know it's an A, but it's just a little shorter. So I styled it a little bit different. Um, so our card is just taking on a bit more personality, which is nice. So I feel very Bob Ross in this moment. Like there aren't any mistakes, just happy accidents, right? I think we could all take a Bob Ross sort of reflection on our days sometimes. It is Wednesday after all. It's like that weird point in the week. Remember your triangle. And the swash. And after the camera went off yesterday, I sort of redo the swash a little bit. Um, so that there was a little bit more balance between the end here and the end here. I, even though this is a bouncier style, I like everything to be pretty centered. Um, it's just my, my thing. You may not mind it if, if you know, your style is a little off-center. I just like everything sort of balanced. Now we've come down to our zip code. Not sure why I started to do the little dash in between the sevens. I think there was a calligraphy order I did a couple of years ago, and there was a complaint that my sevens and my ones looked far too similar. So I just added a dash in the middle of the seven and a little. Um, line at the bottom of the one to keep that from being confusing. So we have finished our um, <clears throat> coloring in for today. If there are any parts that look a little bit strange, you know, um, like that just might be a little too thin, so we'll add a little thick line there. <clears throat> you can go and correct it. I didn't thicken up this part. You can sort of modify it a little bit. Add a little loop balance there. And so you can sort of get things ready because tomorrow I'm going to show you the technique of shadowing um, your letters and how to make it look like a nice believable shadow. 
Um, I know a lot of um, frustration came out of me trying to learn or teach myself where shadows went and you sort of just have to think about it as an art piece like where is your light coming in so tomorrow we will cover that but I hope this has been another um, <clears throat> informational piece and if you want to learn more in person um, I'll be in class hands-on being able to come around and help you troubleshoot um, and give suggestions on additional supplies, the best papers. So it'll be a fun class. So be refreshments. I'm going to have like a hot cocoa station and some fun little nibbles. So it'll be, it'll be a fun uh, evening out, but stay tuned for tomorrow when we learn shadowing and have a great day.